My name is Dr. Matthew Tollefson. I am a surgeon that specializes in urologic oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I've been asked to speak to you today about bladder cancer and specifically about neobladder urinary diversion. Bladder cancer is a disease that, that starts in the lining of the bladder. It's commonly associated with, with exposures from smoking and other environmental carcinogens. When that cancer becomes invasive, frequently it becomes necessary to remove the whole bladder. And after the bladder has been removed, there needs to be a mechanism with which to store and eliminate urine. One of those ways to divert the urine is to create what's called a neobladder. And I think it's helpful to understand exactly what a neobladder is, to understand the types of issues that patients can have in dealing with life after having a neobladder. A neobladder is a segment of intestine that is sphericalized or, or changed into a sphere uh, shape so that it can store more urine and then the urine can be passed through the urethra uh, as it is naturally when a patient has a bladder in, in place. With that change, some of the, the issues that patients with neobladders can have become apparent. For example, that sphericalized bowel does not have a muscular wall and therefore some patients may need to catheterize themselves to empty the bladder. Also, sometimes the neobladder can leak urine and some people may have to wear a pad. But at the end of the day, the hope and the goal of, of these neobladder urinary diversions is to recreate the bladder in such a way that a patient is able to hold the urine within their body, to go to the bathroom when they feel like they need to empty their bladder, the creation of a neobladder is a complex operation. It involves surgery on the bladder, the kidneys, the intestines. In men, it involves removal of the prostate, and in women, it can involve the removal of the uterus and ovaries. This surgery is also associated with a, a lot of complications that just aren't predictable going into the surgery. Studies have shown that patients tend to have the best outcome when the surgery is done at high volume centers or centers that do a lot of these surgeries. Mayo Clinic would be one of these centers where we do a lot of bladder removals and the creation of ileal neobladders. For these reasons, for many patients it makes sense to come to a center like Mayo to have these complex operations done. After a neobladder surgery, patients may have multiple tubes coming out of the body. For example, one may have a stent, there are stents in place that drain the kidneys. Patients may also have a catheter and, and occasionally a suprapubic tube is left to really drain this neobladder after the operation. As time goes on, these tubes are sequentially removed such that the stents are usually removed after about a week or so after surgery. A drain is commonly left in place which is removed again about a week after surgery and a catheter is in place which is usually removed two to three weeks after surgery. After the catheter is removed, most patients have some urinary incontinence. The neobladder is created as a small reservoir and it takes time for that reservoir to expand to reach the normal capacity of the natural bladder. Because of this, in the early post-operative setting, patients do need to go to the bathroom more often. We even encourage some patients to set an alarm to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. But the hope is that as time goes on, uh, this neobladder expands and reaches a functional bladder capacity such that patients can ultimately void uh, on a normal basis, just really depending on how much fluid they take in. I love working at Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic is really unique in the sense that this truly is a team surgery. There are multiple surgeons involved and, and really goes beyond just the surgeons. For example, our anesthesiologists, our nursing staff in the operating room, in the recovery area, and in the post-operative care of patients really is unique and helps us to provide the best outcome that is possible even for patients that need these big surgeries. From a surgical standpoint, I'm blessed with the resources to be able to offer this operation through an open incision or more recently we've been doing a lot of these surgeries with robotic assistance. It is these sorts of resources that help places like Mayo Clinic maintain an, an, an edge and I think a, a true benefit to many patients that, that come here for their care. Thank you very much.